My head? I've been on my head all morning. Hello and welcome everyone. I am here with my beautiful friend, Debbie Perez, who is looking like an angel today. And it's perfect because the conversation for today is peace. And for those of you that have been watching and subscribing to my 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 Zoom interviews, I appreciate you. I thank you so much for that. Um, at the beginning of 2024, I was asking Spirit how I can be of service. And I love doing my interviews with others because I love hearing other people's stories. And honestly, I feel sometimes a little bit bad that I have all these wonderful people in my life and the rest of the world doesn't get to know them as well because they bring such love and joy into my life. So sharing their story is um, my way of sharing some of my joy. Um, Debbie Perez is one of my soul sisters. She went through the Wisdom Mastery Academy with me. She was one of my mentors in the year ahead of me. And in 2024, when I asked Spirit how, can I, how I can be of service, um, I had these little podcasts in and my guides gave me one person for each month of the year and a theme. And I reached out to everyone and even Debbie was like, I don't do this. I don't talk on Zoom to people. I don't want people seeing me. You know, I'm not comfortable with this. And I just kept begging, please, please, please. So first of all, thank you for being here. Um, Thank you. I did not know at the beginning of 2024 that my mother was going to pass away in March and that my theme that spirit picked for me for April with Debbie is peace. And Debbie, who is dressed like an angel appropriately today, uh, was one of the people who helped me when I was in my darkest stages of grief with my mother. Um, Debbie's helped me through a couple dark nights of the soul. Um, when I had a house fire a couple years ago, she picked up on the darkness that I literally felt inside and out, both my home and my spirit, and she sent me love and healing. And then when my mom was passing through, I knew that she was going through the entire month of March. And so March was a really intense month of prayer and helping my mom cross over to the other side because she was very afraid. And so I did a lot of family constellation therapy with her soul. And I did a lot of prayer and meditation. And even that, having all the tools in the toolkit, um, her passing was very hard for me. And Debbie, in my relationship with her, I watched her go through a number of very sad deaths in her life. She had her brother and her father pass very short um, timing right around each other. And so I knew that I could speak to her in grief in ways that I can't to other because she knew grief intimately. And she taught me about the Kadash prayer. I might be saying it wrong. Um, Kaddish, Kaddish. Kaddish prayer, which really helped me in so many ways. So spirit knew that Debbie was my angel for peace. And she helped bring peace to myself and peace, peace to my mom. And um, here we are um, doing this recording a bit late. But of course, it's in the veil when the, the veil is thinning and our spirits are, are coming home. I've been feeling my mother very profoundly. So I think that everything is in divine timing, even if it doesn't make sense when we jot down the notes from our spirit guides telling us what to do. I had not foreseen any of this beforehand, yet spirit is a beautiful creator and puts us always in the right people. So first of all, my beautiful dear friend, Debbie, I know that you are not one to talk. So I, I'm going to ask questions and then you can, then we can just have a conversation. Nothing fancy because I think the main thing is, is for people that are going through grief, it's to know that they're not alone. And that there is a journey in it. So can you talk to me a little bit about your experience with grief and finding peace in all of those dark moments? So first of all, thank you, Paige, for including me in this beautiful time. And, you know, um, 
I am not uh, one to talk live, but I am a talker or I used to be a talker until I learned how to go inside of me after all the grief that I've been through. My lifetime actually is not only um, my passing of my brother and my father within 40 days uh, back three years ago already. This month, it was three years for my dad. Um, and um, I also lost my sister when I was 16. So right now, um, I guess life has a way of showing you the lessons you come here to learn and the help you come here to give. And I found, thanks to our common coach and teacher, Shakti, um, healing within so that I could heal everything that was given to me. Um, today, I know there were lessons and um, grief to me, it's beautiful. Not at the moment you're living it, but it helps you grow. And I bring it, you know, it's all it's peaceful because I learn how to, to understand that it's not about you. See, we all think, why did this happen to me? Why me? Why do this keeps happening to me? Why do I have so much loss? Why do I have so much abandonment? Because that's actually how I felt. My parents divorced when I was a kid. Abandonment, number one. My sister left me. She died. It's not her fault. Abandonment. You know, then my brother got sick and he passed away. Abandonment. My father passed away. There we go. So he just kept repeating and repeating. And I think it was lessons that, um, you know, the universe, God, divine, however you want to call him, is giving us so that we can learn how to overcome it. The beautiful thing about it for me was that I, was, I learned how to be peaceful inside and be the light for all of us and just see the light in everything that happened. Um, so grief to me is something that never goes away. It's always there. You will not, you cannot overcome grief. It's forever. But how you make it beautiful is, in my opinion, what helps to continue to live in happiness. And uh, so, for instance, for me, um, there's moments, there's always going to be moments when, you know, my sister has been over, I don't want to say my age, but 30 some years. So, you know, it's like that. It took me 10 years to overcome. I remember that it was when my first child was born that I finally let go of that pain because now I had a family. Now it was my new thing and my baby it was everything to me. And so that was great. But I never would have thought that again, God was going to give me pain, so much pain that my only brother was also going to pass away. And he had to go through this whole journey of uh, pretty bad illness that only lasted two years, two and a half years. So, so I figure out by being with our beautiful teacher that um, first I had to heal myself inside, go through everything, you know, break all those um, cords that were attached to me, all those guilty feelings, all those painful moments that, you know, all those, why me? Why now? Why again? Why? And it's just, we don't need to know why. I know the reason is because we all die and we're all going to die. You know, like I, when I was growing up, people used to say, there's two things in life you can't change, taxes and death, you know? And, and, and the truth is that we're going to die when it's our turn. And I think God has a divine way. Uh, when my brother passed away, which was the hardest, um, he got ill and it was a very awful um, sickness. I mean, he, he, he got ALS and he lost his voice. So he got, he lost his voice. So he couldn't speak. And it's all about this. See, I have issues speaking. So it's like a lesson. It's like, hello, wake up. You need to speak out about this. You need to show your thing. So for me, um, grief was what made me grow into the beautiful woman I am now. And I know I've changed. And I know if it wasn't for those painful um, moments in my life, I would have never become 
the beautiful woman I feel and now that's why I feel like I shine mm -hmm. and I see the light in everything and uh, when 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 I when when moments come you know like now you don't have anybody to talk eventually you know so I only have my mom left now uh, I have a, uh, a lot of half siblings but I didn't grow up with them so it's not the same um, on my dad's side but the beautiful thing with my mom is like I shifted everything because of this pain and now my relationship with my mom also shifted mm -hmm. and so 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 to your question about grief is forever mm -hmm. when 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 I remember about my brother you know I I, I sometimes cry it happens it's been three and a, three years three and a half almost and I cry and I get in the moment, but then immediately, you know, I control, you know, I, I am so into the 5D, I call it, into Zen that I immediately, you know, thank God. And I thank, and that's one of the biggest thing, give thanks for everything. So I thank you. And I usually, you, 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 you're you supposed to say thank you like three times. And so you say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the pain. Thank you for the moment. Thank you for, for, for allowing me to cry. And I immediately become and turn right back into the present moment and, Everything is beautiful. And that's the biggest lesson is like, you cannot live in the past and you cannot live in the future. You have to live in the present moment. And even with that pain, it's a beautiful pain. But once you come back to the present moment, you're grateful that you're still here and you have to give mm -hmm. to receive. And so you have to give to receive. And the more you give, even when you're in pain. And that's why when you called me about your mom, it was like, I, I know I can help you because you give and the more you give the more you receive and the happier your soul feels and so everything i do is from the soul it's different than before and it's they don't you know there's no handbook to life or to living but when those we love pass even you know i feel like i was prepared i had all the tools in my spiritual toolkit i know there's life beyond i i still struggled and so it, it also put a little bit of awe in my heart how people are coping when they don't have these spiritual tools to work with because what I, when my mom passed it was like time had no meaning for the those first seven days especially I was really I could feel myself kind of ushering her to the other side and she was so present with me that time didn't exist in that stage of grief and and I was trying to figure out how to honor my grief and use my tools. And I still, I, d I didn't really have them. I just had like that wisdom knowledge of, you know, what to do. And so when I called you, um, because your background, you're Jewish, there's, there, there's more of a connection and a rites of passage to mourn your dead. And you know, the rest of us, you know, I know as a Catholic, we have the, the Hail Mary prayer, which of course I used, but there was something, you know, when you taught, you, you just, I said, I'm, I'm hurting and I, I need to honor her. And you just said, okay, this is what we do. And you gave me this, this beautiful, these tools. And that, of course, I didn't use them exactly to the, the, the right. You don't have to, you don't have to, but it gave me a way to focus my energy deep in prayer. So could you, and I, I can find the prayer for you if you need to based on my phone, but could you just kind of explain a little bit about what you told me um, and how um, how it works for you and your faith tradition? So I'm no expert in this. I'm going to tell you my version of it. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things um, before I go into that, um, I want to say that I, I, I grew up Jewish, um, and um, I also, once I started in this journey of um, healing before, I, the, it was very, very casual that I met this amazing uh, coach right uh, a, a few weeks right before my brother was diagnosed. And so God sent me this amazing woman. And I started doing healings with her about, you know, my pet, like ancestor healing and all that stuff. And uh, during that time, it was two years of a lot of pain where my dad and my brother both were getting sick. And at the same time, like when one would go down, the other one would go down. When one was feeling better, the, it was like, I always felt these two souls were together. Um, I did Kabbalah also online. This was during COVID. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so the reason I want to bring that in is because everything, the way I was able to heal um, was not only with the Jewish prayer that they teach us since we're little, you know, once you have um, a, path, a death in the family. Uh, and every week and every week you do the Kaddish if you're, you know, for anybody who's, who's hurting and you're supposed to do it for 11 months if a parent passed away. Now, women are not supposed to do this, so it depends on what part of Judaism you're in or not. You know, if you're really Orthodox woman, are not supposed to do this, but for 30 days at least, for every family member, you mourn, and every morning and every evening, right before sun, so at sun, at sundown, I mean, at, sun, at uh, sunrise and at sunset, you're supposed to do this beautiful prayer. And the beautiful thing when, when Paige called me, actually was at the store, and I'm like, uh, you know, I was like caught off guard when she called, but I still remember I was sitting in my car and I stopped what I was doing because I was just about to get out of the car. And, and the prayer is just tells you it's all about God and thanking God for this beautiful moment. This moment is not beautiful but for this moment, for, for, for that he is the one who decides everything. And the prayer, you know, it's just about, you know, we believe in you, we trust you, you know, and, and we want you to, you know, we, it's just about God. There's not, there's no word about death. The word death is not in that. Yeah. I noticed that. Yes. And, and it's like, it's like, why are you asking me to pray and tell you, thank you. And you're everything when I just lost a love, somebody I loved a lot, but in that same comment that I made a little while ago is the thankfulness. You're thanking mm -hmm. God for everything. Is that because every time you think, or even, you know, God, you have a car accident, you have to learn to thank immediately for that and that you're alive. So you're really thanking God for being alive. Mm -hmm. So this whole prayer is about being alive. So we are alive and we're supposed to keep our people who passed alive. And the way we do this is by you know, talking about them. So the prayer, you know, I, I, I probably would have to look it up. I had no idea you were going to ask me about that. Uh, it's just um, a way of remembering that only the divine is mm -hmm. the one who decides. It's not us. And that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And so you do this for, for seven days when it's, so, you know, for seven days and you sit in, in this people come visit you and so that's one thing i told Paige. it's good that you have people see in our religion we're supposed to bury the person immediately as soon as you can except it's shabbat because you have to um you know that the body is just the body but your soul is supposed to raise up and so these prayers we do is to help the soul raise up regardless of what the person did on this earth there is no such thing as hell for us mm -hmm. it's just if they weren't that good, then you're going to need a lot more prayers and a lot more people praying so that your soul will go, you know, to heaven. If there were really good people, uh, you'll need less. But regardless, when you pray, you're helping their soul race. When You know what I'm saying when it's race, you know. Well, and I could feel that. when So when my mom passed, my mom was very afraid of the other side. She was never comfortable with my healings or my spiritual work. She thought it was all bad and dangerous and um, that's how my mom is right now just so you know and so uh, I knew she had a couple um near-death experiences of which she never saw light she felt trapped in the room and she couldn't she could never get past that so I knew that part of my role in her life and in her death was to help her cross to the other side and I felt her so intently, especially during those first seven days. And to be able to have a practice and a prayer specifically to get up. And so I, I basically had an electric light that I put up in the attic at, that was on all the time. And I would... We, we put a candle, right? We, I told you we put a candle for the whole week. So they have these candles, which is similar to the Christian big candles. And you turn it on as soon as the person is buried. And, and that's how we do it. And so sometimes if it's Friday or Saturday and you couldn't bury it, then you wait until Sunday after. You turn it on and it lasts for seven days. And and it's incredible. 
And so I, I just use an electric light because I don't really use candles um, since my house fire. Anymore, but, right. But but it was beautiful to have a space that I could go to, to be with her. And I uh, had a veil, my Catholic tradition, I have a beautiful veil. And I, I, I did a yes and. I did I did the Kaddish? Kaddish? Kaddish. 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 I, I did the Kaddish prayer. I wrote it out and I had it in a beautiful frame next to a picture of my mom. And every morning and every night, and multiple times throughout the day, I would be able to just kind of sit with that prayer. And also, you know, for me with my faith-based tradition, I, I of course called in Mother Mary and I worked with all my other saints and angels, but I could feel the spirit of my mother moving from beyond the veil. I could feel her kind of in that very, very heavy, heavy, heavy dark space up until when I, I, I could feel her crossover and it did take about seven days it really was and in that time I remember because my mom passed away on Good Friday which is right at the end of March oops and he's um, here somebody's here with us you know that right yeah um and, and it's not only the cat you know that right no of course my and my mom loved cats too she had one of I I helped her cross over with some of her cats she's thanking you she's thanking you right now that's how I feel that's the feeling I get right now just so you know yeah, thank you. I agree. <laughs> um, just thank you. And so, yeah, it's... And so it, it just was like, I... <sighs> grief is hard. And like you said, you know, it comes in waves. Like it never, it never goes away. Like it, it happens, you know, just the other night I was going to bed and I was at that place right before sleep. And it's clear as day, I heard my mom say my name and I woke up. And then I was sad because I hadn't stayed in that state to to connect with her more. But then I was like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's with me. I know she's she's okay. connecting. I know she's there. And in this odd way, I feel closer to my mom since she passed than I did when she was living for the last 10 years because she was very uncomfortable with my spiritual journey. And so now I feel this lightness about her with when it comes to me and she's come through in readings and she comes through with signs all the time so i know she's crossed over i know and she's yeah. and science is something very incredible so so my brother comes in with this white butterfly is this what ever the moment that he passed so he passed in a different state so i had to fly when i got back just this white butterfly visits me every morning and actually um you know we just went through the high holidays which is the most sacred time uh actually my dad passed away right after the high holidays and um and 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 so so the 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 um what else uh, i forgot what i was going you were talking about huh the signs and so these white butterflies so 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 for for the last few months i've been traveling a lot and my brother like i haven't seen the butterfly in a long time so there I was sitting on Yom Kippur, you know, and I was praying uh, in, in the temple, which I don't, I don't go a lot to temple because everything I did do, I don't need temple. See, when I grew up, I thought I had to go to temple to do what I do, but I don't. I can connect with God immediately just by going into meditation, just by saying I'm the light, just by, you know, I know how to go internally and I can communicate actually um with my past that I mean with my with my ancestors now something I never used to do before like I didn't know how to do that and I'm with others and you know guides and they and they tell me and and you know and I learn how to ask who they are and so each one you know each each person has a soul and what I've learned with this thing is that each soul shines differently so uh, I'm a feeling person and no person like I know you're a, a hear person like you you hear things when you when you're doing I don't I know it it's like it's the knowing mm -hmm. and so I learned through the process what when I was learning all this because I also do shema you know uh, healings like you do yeah. with the crystalline soma healings um, each time one of my ancestors, like my sister shows up or my grandma or my brother, what I see is this light and is their soul. And each one is different. So at the beginning, I used to ask, and who are you? Like, I would see that light and I would say, which one are you? But now I don't ask because I know each light. It's like, I know that's him and I know that's him and I know that's my dad and I know that's my sister. And I know when my grandma and, and if I don't know, I ask who they are. But it's wonderful because when I am in need of like 
when I'm in grief or in pain or, or in wonder, I go into, you know, into Zen, I call it immediately. And I ask for any of them to show up and they do. And I thank them. And so some of the signs is like the white butterfly is my, is my brother. I actually had a, my dog passed away last year. It's going to be a year next month. And the moment that we put her down, this yellow butterfly started showing up. I'm like, oh, so you're going to be my yellow butterfly. And so every now and then I have this yellow butterfly, but this white butterfly comes every time. And sometimes there's two of them. And I know when there's two is my dad and my brother together. Oh, yeah. And so during the high holiday, you know, I, I asked, I said, I haven't seen you in a long time. Just show me a sign that you're still around. I haven't talked to you. You know, I miss you. And, you know, it's during these times when the holidays come, when their birthdays come, mm -hmm. when their passing comes, when their kid does something that you wish he was here to share. Like when you have, when you have happy moments that you want to share with your loved ones is when you miss them the most. Like, I wish you were here. So I know that I do tell them when I'm out there, you know, and they know that. But uh, immediately I came home and this white butterfly just came by and said, thank you for the sign. Mm -hmm. And then the second, and then another one came by and then another one, I was like, okay, I got it. You're here. Thank you. Thank you. So, so those yeah. signs, you know, feathers, I mean, I collect the feathers. Like I have so many feathers when I walk by, it's like feathers, it's feathers here. It's like, it's like they just show up and, and I used to pick them up. I, I have feathers all over my house. And when they first passed, you know, the feathers would just show up out of the blue, like in the front of my door. Why would it be a feather in the front of my door? <laughs> it was like, it was like, why, why do I walk out? And it's like, I know you're here. It's mm -hmm. angels giving you either they're telling you something or they're telling you they're here with you or they're saying, be careful or watch or, or pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so these feathers, you know, all these signs that show up for everybody is differently. I had a monarch butterfly. I planted a tree this weekend. Mm -hmm. It said that tree is going to be in honor of my dog who passed away last year. She she gave us everything. She was 12 when she passed. And this monarch butterfly just suddenly showed up and stayed with me until the until the tree was planted. Mm. I was like, I have never like seen a monarch like really pass in my yard or even my front. I went to the front yard and there she was or he or whatever mm. butterfly, you know, <laughs> it was. And I was like, okay. This might be something new I need to do, but I think it was just thanking me that I planted that tree because I've been wanting to do a garden there for my brother for the longest time, but there's always been something and I haven't been able to. But um, so signs are something good, but let me let me go back to, I found the, the thing I sent you about the English transliteration. There's a hundred of them mm -hmm. for the Kaddish. Um, and, and the other thing that we didn't finish saying about the Kaddish is that, so you say it for seven days, and people come and you sit on the floor. You're not supposed to put makeup on. You're supposed to cover your mirrors because it's not about your vanity. It's all about God and it and them. And and you're supposed to like, after that, you do it for 30 days for anybody who's passed. So I did that for my brother for 30 days. And you do for a year for your parent, for 11 months for your parent. Mm -hmm. And then the last month. So those 11 months is the months that they're supposed to raise up and, and 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 for a child you also don't do it you only do it for 30 days which is kind of interesting like mm -hmm. only a parent you're supposed to pray you know the same prayer two times a day every day for 11 months and for me because my brother and my dad passed within 40 days uh which also i said it's incredible because 40 days is how many days uh we stood you know in the it's it's incredible you know for me numbers everything meant a lot uh, those are the signs that yeah. once you go past the grief, you start looking at them and seeing the meaning and trying to figure out, or you ask and you find out the meaning, you know, and, and so, so I was able to pray for both of them for 11 months, my brother and my dad, because I was doing my dad. So, Hey, I'm going to do my brother too. Mm -hmm. And, and so that was very calming. So this is an English version of, uh, you know, different. There's everybody who says, but he says, May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, honored, elevated, and looted and looted to be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he. This is all about God. Above and beyond any blessings and hymns. Praise and consolations which are order in the world and say amen. It's all about him. It's all about praising God for your, you know, for being life. here because we chose to be here for life yes that's for being the survivor you know we have to we have to so i live my life for me 
but in honor of them. Yes. For me, it's like I keep living for them. Like, like I I remember them like on my birthday, you know, and, and I wake up on my birthday and I probably cry and 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 then I put together, but but they are they're the reason we're here and 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 we, you know, we have to remember them and we have to talk about them. And a lot of people don't because it's painful. I mean, look at me, I'm 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 kind of cry. I, I it's painful, but it's it's the way to keep them alive. And it's kind of, and I love how you grief in some ways is beautiful because when you love someone that much and you can hold them in your heart, it's like you said, it's not, it's not beautiful at all when it's happening. However, there is a grace in it. There's, there's a level of, of love that you never experienced with that person yes. before. And being able to recognize that love that's in your heart is when you can really allow the grief to be beautiful because when there's when there's hurt in in the past it all seems so trivial when someone passes you know it's like exactly. you, start, you start to realize the beauty of their soul and their choices even though you didn't understand it when they were alive there's like like I understood my mother and I forgave more her. after she passed and, more and after I, she passed more after she passed and I was able to forgive her because I was able to see it through an adult's eyes through like a loving lens versus when I she was alive I saw everything through the uh, the, the lens of a child wanting needing her to do xyz and when she passed she was just this infinite soul and suddenly I could see her as this infinite soul and I could love her in a way that I never knew I could experience before. Exactly. And it, it, it was like getting to know her soul, which was, it's different. You know, like you said, seeing your brother and your father as light, their soul is different than their, their, their human self. They really, really yeah. they really are so like so much more, wise and profound and deep and when you can love someone for the spirit that they are like there's no reason to be angry or sad or upset about what someone said and like every once in a while something will happen and I'll think of like something that my mom did or said that I didn't like and and then I'll just say I forgive you I love you I forgive you I love you like and I wish that I'd been able to do that when she was alive. She was alive. Um, we say that all the time. That is like the one thing I wish I would have done this when she was alive. And that brought me to a couple of things that I wanted to mention, because I know when people pass, there is different circumstances. Like, um, for instance, my sister, uh, I had just fought with her. The moment, like the week before she passed, like the day, be like two days before she passed, we had the biggest fight. I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. She was a teenager. It was like... And, and it was incredible because when uh, she, she also, she was born with cystic fibrosis. So she, we knew she was going to pass sometime. My mom always told us she's going to die. And usually back then in the eighties, they didn't go past their teenage year. So she was 12 and I had the biggest fight with her and I wasn't talking to her. Mm. And that night that she passed, my mom took her to the hospital and she used to go to the hospital a lot in and out. But this time my mom slept there for the first time ever. And um, so there was some spiritual stuff that happened. That, that was the first time I really saw signs that I'm supposed to be doing what I do, which what I do is I do healings and I do energy healings. And I now also do house healing, like cleaning. That's what I've been doing the most. And um, I, I really love it. Um, but I connect also with spirit and, and, you know, and I use crystals a lot, but not to the very, um, so my mom called us at, at, at 3 a.m. Well, the alarm woke, there was a, the house alarm went off at 3 a.m. in my house and a light came in through my window. I saw it like I was sleeping, but I saw a light and then the alarm went off and we're like, me and my brother were alone and, you know, we're like scared. We didn't know what to do. You know, mom's not home. Uh, so we went and turned off the alarm, checked that nobody went into the house, whatever. And I went to sleep saying, my mom's going to call me. My mom's going to call me. My mom's going to call me. This was at 3 a.m. At 6 a.m., my mom called us or five something. She called us up and she said, um, come, your sister went in a coma at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. I need you to, we need, you need to come through the ER so you can go, because that's the only door that's open. You know, come see her before she goes. 
uh, you, know, you and your brother. So we went over there and she waited for us. And we got, got there and, and we got the moment we got there, you know, immediately I was a kid. I said, I don't recall if I said it out loud, but I know I said it inside. And I think I said it out loud. Maybe I didn't. My mom said to us, she's in a coma, but you can talk to her because she hears everything you say. And I said, I'm sorry for fighting for you. I love you. I'm so sorry for, I, I, I know I had the chance to do that. I wish I had the chance while she was awake, but she wasn't. And immediately, um, immediately after I said that, she went. Mm -hmm. She said, Ma! And she was gone. And mm -hmm. I was like, I was grateful that I was able to say it, whatever, inside or outside. I think, I don't remember. I think it was inside because my mom had no idea, you know, but I don't know. And, and, and so, so that, so I learned that lesson that, when my brother got really sick, we talked about everything. I was able to say goodbye to him so beautifully. Mm. We forgave each other for all the things because we did have a painful relationship later in life, like the last few years before he got sick. And and his wife and him opened the door for us to come and be part of his, you know, we hope was his healing, but it definitely was his his deterioration in life because ALS is just awful. And, and, and we talked about everything and we were able to, you know, forgive each other in life. And, and so then, so with my, if I wouldn't have that experience with my sister, I would have never known to have that experience with my brother. And so I was grateful. So here we go again. So that's why I had that first death to learn because then there was these two new deaths that were coming so close to each other. And then with my dad, it was the pain of he was never there for us because they were divorced. I mean, we used to see him on vacation, but my dad never knew how to give love. He always, he had money. He always gave us money for everything. He bought everything for us all of his life, but he didn't know how to give love. And at the end, I was able to give him unconditional love with all these things that happened with him that at the end he was being like thank you Debbie thank you like he was thanking me for everything he actually he was really ill at the end and he was calling and saying please help me pass over please but he was thankful for all the things I did in 3D and I forgave him and he was he he was really shocked that of all his kids, because he had a lot of kids, you know, he had just lost, he, he, that was, my brother was the third child he had lost. So for my dad was devastating when he died. Not only he had kidney disease, but he was devastated. He had lost three children and it was his old, you know, my sister and then his two older children. So now I am the oldest. And I just didn't want, you know, he kept saying thank you. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. You don't need to thank me. And, and that's the one thing I regret. I actually was telling a friend yesterday that I never said it's okay, you're welcome. I never said you're welcome because I felt like I didn't want him to thank me. This was my job. He was my dad. It's like I wanted to give him all this peace. Like, like you know, like, like I wanted him to feel at ease. And when he passed, it was beautiful because we were there and I did see his soul mm -hmm. go up. And, and we were holding his hand and it was me and my half-sister and my stepmom, and, and it was the most beautiful experience because now I already had lost two loved ones. And and I was listening to this, this man who had given me life, who had given me pain, lots of pain. He always talked bad about me. He didn't treat me well as a child. But this man that I loved because he was his soul that I saw. Mm -hmm. And I felt his soul. He was so grateful. His soul, you know, until, I mean, his soul went up right in front of me. And I was able to see that we had beautiful music around. It was just the three women that he had in his life. And, and it was just amazing. And so, so I'm grateful for that experience too. So, so it's okay if you were angry with the person who passed and you weren't able to give forgiveness because you still can do it after the fact. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but if you're watching this and you have a chance to like, to like, Stop fighting with your siblings. Stop fighting with your parents. See them as, put yourself in their position. You know, like see them as in their view, not your view. You have to get out of your zone and not see them the way you see. Mm -hmm. Because you're always going to see it with your glasses. But your glasses are yours. And there, they might be seeing. With my brother, he had this whole story about me that I don't know where he made it out. He had no idea who I was. And I'm not talking about this soul person because I was not this person I am today. And that's, that process was during his sickness that I became 
the soul I am now. And, and you know, I was like, why didn't we talk about this before? We would have had all our difference made if you would have really realized that you're wrong about the way I was. And so, so I learned that. And so that's why I speak up. And, and when I have friends who don't speak with their siblings, I say, talk to them. What if they would die tomorrow? I have no siblings now. What if they wouldn't be here tomorrow? How would you feel? Right. And, and the way, the way I see the people I love now and even my friends and whatever is, I don't see them as the person they are. If I see somebody like talks to me badly or says something bad, I said, you know what? Let me look at their soul. They must be going through something really hard. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's never been about us. Mm -hmm. So I asked God and, you know, to, to, I ask God or the divine, the universe to please, you know, I send them light and I am the and light. I think, and I think that right there is the definition of peace. I think that when you can look at someone anyone everyone people who've hurt you people that are strangers just from the wisdom and the perspective of their light of their soul that's really when you find the deep peace that only comes with wisdom and to do that sometimes you have to pause and that's the magic thing pause mm -hmm. breathe in and you will see and send them light. So you're sending that peace that you're talking about. And you can see the soul inside this beautiful person who's suffering for whatever reasons they are. Mm -hmm. And you see them and you 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 are at peace that you you understand them, even though you might not. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Thank you, Debbie. I feel like. And I'm always just in absolute awe of like how spirit, you know, new peace, April, you know, now we would connect now on this day today. Like, it's just, it doesn't, life doesn't always make sense, but the connecting of the dots is always so beautiful. There's such a grand architect and, you know, I, I just feel so blessed that, I know you, that I have you as my friend, that you were able to go through your journey and then help me with mine. And then maybe we've helped other people today watching this video if they're going through grief themselves, just to know you're not alone and that it doesn't go away and it doesn't get better, but you will become wiser with each step. And with each experience, you can step through this threshold of grief, this, this struggle, this darkness, this shadow, and you will find the peace, you will find that light, and you will find forgiveness and love. And it's, it's a journey, and to just be gentle with yourself. And hopefully, people that are watching this have someone they can reach out and talk to. If not, I'm here, Debbie's here, you know, we, yes. we are we are all one and we're all connected and you are a beautiful soul. I, you know, whoever's watching this, like you yourself are a beautiful soul and whatever you've gone through in your life, I love you. And I love you for your journey. And, um, likewise, you're going to be okay. And you're going to, you're going to become better and stronger and more light because of this, the, the, the darkness, the shadow, the grief that comes, it holds you down until you learn how to let it go. And then it lifts you up. It's like, it's this, it, it, it buoyant. It's like, it makes you more buoyant, it lifts you up. And, you know, today is just such a beautiful day to be together to, you know, we're talking about sacred times of the year and really our spirits and our loved ones are with us all the time. There are certain times of the year when the veil is thinner and sacred holidays, like Debbie said, birthdays and holidays and the death days, you know, these are the days that we remember and we can reconnect, but to pause and to take our time and our grief and to just love yourself and be gentle. And I will post the prayer. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, I have the version that Debbie gave me. 
And remember that it's always a yes and whatever your faith-based tradition is. Do what makes you feel comfortable, you know, but to remember that when someone passes, prayer is a wonderful way to connect you in and to be able to help you work through this by wiping away the tears and acting like everything is fine is is not it's going not. You it need... took me two years. It took me two years of silent because I had to death. It was two years of being intro into my life, quietness. And the one thing that I, I'm sorry to interrupt you is like, no. uh, this, this tool shall pass. Yeah. And you will be stronger and you will be more loving to others. And I saw you, you have, go through that. And you have your... losses. It was two years of, I did not, like, I was so into me, into, you know, I was really reaching out to, to things and things happen for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. Remember that. But these two shall pass in, in, and always have, always have them present in all your things. Mm -hmm. Always include them because mm -hmm. that's what they want. They want to be with you. They might not be here physically, but like you said, they're more with us now than they were before because we're more connected to them and we just have to believe in that and it's just yeah. I, I appreciate you mm. with the time and and yes just remember that pause breathe and be grateful for mm. everything everything oh I feel so blessed thank you for and thank you for for coming out of your discomfort zone and going online with me. And I know that this will reach at least a few souls out there that really need it. And if nothing else, you've made my day better. You make my life better. You've helped me in so many ways. I love you deeply and forever. You. you are my soul sister. And I, I am so blessed to have you in my life. Me too. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Love. Love and light. Yes. <laughs>